Three-year-old Ronan is slowly recovering after she was viciously attacked by a dog inside an Old Town Spring restaurant Saturday afternoon. This story has angered me in a way that I am very rarely angry because it affects so many people. What's up creatures? It's Em and welcome back to my channel. If you are brand new here, welcome. My name's Em. I'm a former zookeeper and I'm a digital animal educator. If you haven't already, remember to hit that subscribe button down below, become part of the creature crew and also hit that notification bell down in the corner there so you don't miss a single upload. Today I'm going to be relaunching my series Let's Talk About where I cover different topics pertaining to all kinds of animal, pet and wildlife issues. Issues. If you have a topic you'd like for me to cover, please leave a comment down in the comment box below. And also remember, I would love for you to join in with the discussion. So if you have a thought, a comment, or something to add in any way, please leave a comment down in the comment box below. Today I'm going to be talking about a senseless, very upsetting incident which happened earlier this week in Texas involving a fake service dog biting a toddler and then I'm going to be going on and explaining the differences between service dogs and emotional support dogs, how to spot a fake service dog, why people fake having service or ESA dogs and what you can do to help. Before we jump into today's topic, I just want to remind you that I am a published author. My very first book, Animal Kind, is available on Amazon across the world. You can find a link to my book down in the description box below. It may have been a number one bestseller in multiple categories for a number of weeks. Earlier this week in Spring, Texas, a family and their daughter, Ronin, went out to eat at a family restaurant. Whilst this family were waiting to be seated, they came across a woman who was also dining in at this restaurant. She had her pit bull with her and it was in a service dog vest. It was instantaneous. There was a massive pit bull there in a service vest and he just lashed out at her. The pit bull, which was clearly wearing a service dog vest, lunged at the toddler and bit her on the side of the face, leaving her in dire need of almost 20 stitches. Little Ronan suffered a large bite wound to her right cheek, her jaw also injured. Witnesses said my little girl didn't reach for it. She was had her hand, she reached out to put her hand in her face, you know, like she's doing now, and the dog leapt forward. On top of this innocent toddler being bitten by a fake service dog to add insult to injury the owner of this fake service dog decided to flee the scene the family says the owner of the dog did not ask if they could help did not apologize did not stick around Despite these terrifying circumstances, the confusion, the anger, and the awful pain that this toddler would have been in, the family were very quick thinking and did the right thing by going outside and grabbing the license plate number of the offender and their dog. The family was able to get the car's license plate number. Now they are hoping justice will be served. And it has since come out that Spring authorities have been able to track down the owner and she is now potentially facing prosecution, which honestly I am all in favor of because she violated a number of rules which are going to seriously impact a variety of people. It has been very traumatic for us to see my baby attack so viciously. It's wrong. She should be put in jail. She should be held accountable. Old Town Spring police have managed to track down the offender who fled the scene of the crime and the family have set up a GoFundMe to help them seek legal representation to bring this woman to justice. If you would like to contribute, feel free to go down into my description box where you can find the official GoFundMe to help this family. A percentage of today's ad revenue will also be going to this GoFundMe to help this family seek legal representation. I've done some more research on the woman who posed her pit bull as a service dog and aside from blaming Ronan, the toddler her dog bit, for the attack and then fleeing the scene, it's come out that she was sued in the past for another one of her service dogs biting someone. I think this dog pictured here is the dog which caused the lawsuit for $1.3 million in damages. She then faked a break-in at her home and started a fundraiser for herself in order to cover her legal 
medical costs, she also faked being a professional dog trainer. As much as I hate to be rude, I really hope that this woman is prosecuted and found guilty for her crimes, because an innocent girl has been mauled and disfigured, and the family has been put through a needless nightmare. And this entitled lawbreaker is a repeat offender, with her dogs having mauled others in the past. In my opinion, she should be fined, face a prison sentence, and be banned from owning any more dogs. In order to understand how this pitbull was a fake service dog, first of all we have to understand what an actual service dog is. What makes a service dog a service dog? Here in the United States, a service animal is defined as a highly skilled, highly trained animal which performs a task to aid someone with a disability. Here are some examples of services which a service animal may perform. Pulling a wheelchair, retrieving dropped items, alerting a person to a sound, reminding a person to take medication, or pressing an elevator button, among many other skilled tasks. As much as various pets can bring comfort to their owners, there is no such thing as a service bird, reptile, ferret, or hamster. Because of the high skill level work required from a service animal, only service dogs and miniature horses are recognized as service animals by the ADA, or the Americans with Disabilities Act. A miniature horse can perform tasks such as stabilizing a person with mobility issues and guiding those who are partially sighted or blind. Service animals have public right of access, which means that they are allowed to go and should be allowed to go wherever their owner might go. This can include places of worship, aeroplanes, restaurants, and in other places like stadiums where animals might not actually be allowed. Service animals are often trained by professional trainers, which costs thousands and thousands of dollars. Some owners do train their own service animals, but it's more common for service animals to be trained and then partnered with someone with a disability who requires a service dog or a service pony. An ESA stands for an Emotional Support Animal. Emotional Support Animals are not service animals. Emotional Support Animals can be any kind of animal, not just a dog or a miniature horse or pony. An example of an ESA are bearded dragons, snakes, cats, chinchillas, dogs, almost any animal you can think of. The function of an Emotional Support Animal is just to give emotional support to their owner. They do not have to be highly trained or highly skilled. There is no official register for an ESA and ESAs do not have the right to public access, meaning that ESAs are not allowed in restaurants and they are not allowed in certain areas such as stadiums or places of worship where their owners might go. Although you don't have to have a disability or a mental disorder to benefit from an ESA, people who often do find comfort in ESAs are those who have suffered deep personal loss and those living with PTSD, bipolar disorder, that's me, anxiety and depression. Since ESAs do not have to perform specific tasks, they do not have the right to access most public spaces. However, they are sometimes still allowed to accompany their owners free of charge in the cabin of aircraft. Unfortunately, due to people exploiting the courtesy of airlines and trying to fly their peculiar, oversized and badly behaved pets for free under the guise of them being ESAs, many airlines have completely restricted which species of ESA may fly in the cabin, and as of January 2021, many large airlines have completely abolished flying ESAs altogether. Because service animals and ESAs have been allowed to fly for free in the cabin of airlines, you can imagine how many people do take advantage of this and fake their animals being service or ESA animals animals. Because of this, there has been a huge skyrocket in the amount of bites on board airplanes, the amount of dogs defecating in airplanes, as well as dogs getting into fights and making life a misery for passengers and airline staff alike. Because of this, two more key airlines in the United States have, since January 2021, banned and prohibited ESAs from traveling in cabin with their owners. This is a massive blow to those who truly do depend on their animals when traveling for emotional support. Some people fake their animal being a service dog because their dog has separation anxiety or other behavioral issues which make the owner avoid leaving their pet home alone. Some people fake their service animals and ESAs so they don't have to leave their pet with a sitter when they go away on holiday. And some people fake having service animals and ESAs for the views. Oh, what's gone into you today, Carl?
No, he's supposed to be a service dog. But by far, the vast majority of people who fake having service animals in ESAs are those who wish to benefit from the Fair Housing Act, which currently means that landlords are unable to decline a pet if it serves as an ESA or a service animal, and these landlords cannot charge pet rent for these animals. Aside from seemingly small problems like poorly trained ESAs and fake service animals defecating in places such as restaurants or planes, fake service animals and ESAs cause dire consequences for real ESAs and real service animals. Something I want to draw attention to which you might not be aware of is that service animals are legally classed as medical equipment. They are highly trained, highly skilled animals which are trained often for years before being partnered with a disabled person who requires that animal's assistance in order to live a normal everyday life as much as possible. These service dogs must be able to focus on their job. This is why you're not supposed to pet service animals when you see them out and about, whether it is a dog leading a blind person or simply a dog that might look like a regular dog wearing a service vest. The proper etiquette is to leave the dog to perform the function that it is. No kissing sounds to get the dog's attention. This can actually draw attention away from the dog, which is supposed to be doing its job and picking up on vital clues that its owner might be giving off. For example, fawning blood sugar, which might lead to epilepsy or a diabetic seizure. The dog must be able to focus on its job. So not only are unruly people a problem for service dogs performing tasks for their disabled owners, but unruly pets are as well. If a person is faking having a service dog in a confined area, such as in a mall, a plane, or a restaurant, or anywhere else, and that dog reacts to a real service dog, it's again pulling the focus away from the dog's duty. And if the worst should happen, where a service dog is attacked by a fake service animal, which happens a lot more than you would realize, this can undo years of careful training and partnership with the disabled owner and the dog. In some cases, this renders the service dog completely useless for its task. There have been multiple instances where fake service dogs have attacked and killed real service dogs. This means that the disabled person who truly relies on that dog's medical cues or for stability or just to be able to be their own eyes like a seeing eye dog can no longer live a normal life because one person decided to act as though they were disabled just so that they could bring their animal to the mall or to the movies or to the grocery store. So how do you tell a fake service dog apart from a real service dog? Real service dog handlers want to be ignored. They aren't drawing attention to their dogs or encouraging any interactions with them. Fake service dog handlers often let people and other dogs interact with their pets because they like to show them off. Real service dogs are always under control. They appear focused on their owner and they're ignoring distractions around them as best they can, such as people and other dogs. Fake service dogs are often looking around, they're not focused on a particular task, and they're sometimes pulling on their leash or even barking at other dogs. Real service dogs are almost invisible in public places. Their handlers will have them obediently curled under chairs on planes and in restaurants, and they will have them close at all times when walking. Although not a legal requirement, real service dogs will often be wearing a service dog vest in public. It will not say ESA or therapy dog, as neither ESAs or therapy dogs have public rights of access. In addition, these vests will often have badges in prominent places which urge people not to pet the dog and to ignore them. Real service dogs are kept on leash. There are some rare instances where a service dog may be off leash, such as if a leash will prevent the dog from performing its particular task. However, when out in public, service dogs are generally kept on leash. Real service dogs pee when they're instructed to. They will not mark or accidentally eliminate indoors, such as in the aisle of an aircraft or in a store. You cannot tell a service dog by its breed alone, but there are some more popular breed choices due to breed intelligence and work ethic, such as poodles and shepherds. If you would like to find out more about service animals, emotional support animals, and therapy animals, please feel free to go down into my description box where I will link a number of resources for you to learn more. Something else that you can do to help is to share the resources down in my description box or to share this video and just spread the knowledge to bring attention to the fact that so many people are faking being disabled so that they can take their animals with them wherever they go. If you are somebody who was unaware of the implications of your actions, then please learn 
from this video. If you do not like to leave your dog home alone because you feel that it has separation anxiety, work with a trainer. Crate train your animal so that you don't come home to a destroyed property. Hire a walker at midday so that your dog can get the adequate exercise it needs and the mental stimulation and work with a trainer to move past this. Please do not think that putting a service vest on your dog so you can take them wherever you go is doing your dog a favor. It's not and it's certainly not doing the disabled community a favor either. Thank you for watching today's video. I would say that I hope you enjoyed it but it was a bit of a difficult topic to cover so I hope that you found this topic informational and that you managed to come away feeling like you learned something about the difference between service dogs, emotional support animals and why they should not be faked. Thank you guys all so much for watching. I will see you in another video soon. Bye!